Hi, Josh here, and today you're watching episode 2 of Phase Converter Build. If you want to know what a rotary phase converter is, or types of phase converters, or a little bit about 3 phase power, I strongly suggest you go watch episode 1. I know it's got theory in it, I forget what I call it. You know what? Just give me a virtual high five. Click on the hand. Oh wow, I got a light right there, sorry about that. This was not well planned, whatsoever. Anyway, let's go any anyone anyway. Wow, this is spiring out and draw. Build quickly. The plan. <laughs> so the plan is to increase the capacity of my rotary phase converter so it can it can handle my new mill. Well, new, I say new. It's new to me. It's not really new. Anyway, that's off topic. The way I'm doing this is by adding additional idler idler motors to my rotary phase converter. Now, this will uh, require me to build a frame that will then hook up to the old phase converter, which is what this episode would be about, and then wiring that into a master control panel so that I can control each idler motor independently. So I can select how many uh, horsepower I will need to be running. So when you see the build, you might think that I'm a little crazy. Which, let's be honest, I am. But, you'll, you'll think I'm a little less crazy when I mention that these motors were for free. We got we took them out of some rooftop units that we took off a commercial building. Now, these rooftop units are not used very often, so these motors are actually in pretty good condition. Anyway, let's go build the frame that I'm going to pop these motors onto. Now, I made a few mistakes when I was building this thing. Okay, more than a few, so um, I got a, a, an error counter. Yeah, it's uh, somewhere around here. Uh, I don't know where, so... But. You'll see it pop up every so often to uh, shame me in the errors of my ways, or building at least. So, uh, yeah, that ought to be fun. Igor, get my wrench. Yes, master. Okay, so the first step is to uh, make the uh, platforms that the motors are going to go on to. So these platforms are going to be made out of some angle iron that I got laying around and they'll, they will require a 45 degree cut on each side so I can miter each uh, side together and make a nice square. Okay so to cut the, so we're here at my chop saw to cut those rails for the platform. So I'm mitering the chop saw to 45 degrees. But apparently the chop saw does not want to uh, cut today. Uh, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, please stand by. Okay, so to cut the, the rails, like I said, they're being mitered at 45 degrees. But in order to miter in the right direction, I have to cut one side, flip it, and then cut the other. So I'm just cutting them all to, uh, I'm cutting them a little long to cut the one side, and then I'll remeasure and cut the other side. So to make this uh, process easier, I'm gra I grab the speed square and I'm marking the uh, actual 45, where, exactly where I want to cut. This will allow me to line the blade up on the mark and cut it quickly and, uh, well, relatively accurately. Okay, so now that I got all the pieces cut, it's time to weld. Now you may notice I'm using a jig here. I'm kind of cheating. This jig uh, matches the two pieces of the steel at a per close to perfect 45 degree. So I can just pop them in, clamp it, weld it, or tack it. And once I get all the pieces together, then I go and weld it. 
so attacking right now. I'm also hitting it with a hammer to make sure it's nice and tight inside the uh, jig. And now I finish up welding. Now I tack first so that I can, uh, so that it doesn't warp out of shape. Wait, error counter? What are you doing? One? What? Where did I mess? I didn't mess anything up. Come on, error counter. What are you doing here? Oh yeah, might have done that. Always watch behind your weld. So I gotta bolt the motor to something. To accomplish this, I'm installing some rails that will go across the platform. Now, these, the way I'm welding these rails in is by put, placing some scrap pieces of angle iron on top of them and just clamping the whole thing down. This will make sure that it's nice and flat on the top. So to separate the platforms, I, I'm going to be uh, in welding some separators in. Now, um, I did mess up again. Go ahead, error counter. Anyway, I messed up when I measured the uh, size of the platforms to the original phase converter because they have to be the same width. I meant when I measured, I failed to take into account the uh, quarter inch thickness of the angle iron. See, the way I normally make something like this is I make the platforms, then lay the platform inside four uh, pieces of angle iron that go to full height of the uh, assembly. So I can just drop the platforms in, weld them up, and they it, it's a lot easier. Fortunately, I didn't do this, so I have to build, uh, well, you'll see in the video. So, in order for the side rails to not go all over the place, I gotta grind the welds flat on the top of the platform. That's what I'm doing right now. And now comes the nightmare trying to weld the uh, rails straight. The problem is that there's really nothing to go by and the platform's a little wonky and it's just a plain old nightmare. See right now I'm trying to use a, uh, a digital angle finder. I thought that might be easier. Well, it wasn't. See, it's off when I use the square. But, see, the square is not perfect either, because the uh, side, the, like, when you're welding, you get a little grunge on the wet metal that you can't get off. It's, uh, it's little bits of metal. So that throws off your, uh, square. It's also a pain in the neck to try to hold a square, hold a piece, and weld at the same time. Now, they do make a jig for this, but I don't have it. Come to think of it, that might be a good thing to get. So and I got all four uh, corners attached to the bottom platform, so now it's time to attach the upper platform, which is now coming into the problem that they're not perfectly square. A little bit at the bottom will equate to a lot at the top. Also, these platforms aren't perfectly identical. There is some difference in size, so that's also making it a nightmare. See, they say measure twice, cut once. What they fail to come up with a saying is measure the proper thing and take into account your material thickness. Why is there no saying for this? Seriously, guys, we gotta work on this. So now I'm checking it with a big square and it's out of whack, of course. So I'm trying to uh, strain it out a bit. 
I tried hitting it with a hammer, that didn't work, so I just decided to slam it against the table. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Yes, error counter. Add another one. However, I will accept that uh, error uh, with pride, because just look at the video in slow motion. Now, if you look closely at that video, you'll notice that I had the welder draped over the steel. And at the exact... Now, this... The cable to the welder is like one inch wide. And that thing nailed it. I could not have aimed better. Go back and look. You know what? I'll, don't bother. I'll show you again. Notice it? So, so now that it's in pieces... It's, uh, I'm trying a different approach. I'm now doing what I wish I could have done, but using clamps instead, running rails along the sides, clamping those rails, and it should be not perfect, but at least will be, should be even anyway. So now I place in the, uh, rails or corners. Would corners be a better way to say it? I'll stick with, oh, eh, I don't know. This is part of, that's the difficult part of making these videos. I have no idea what to call this stuff. So I got the first corner or side rail tacked into place, and I do the rest of them. Unfortunately, before I assembled this, I did not grind everything smooth, so that was. Yes, an error. Is it insane to think that numbers are being smug towards you? I feel that way. Now that everything is tacked into place, I can finally weld everything together. Again, so it doesn't work. So you remember those rails that I made? Yeah, see I'm calling everything rails. I gotta have to come up with another name. Anyway, those uh, chunks of steel, which is really what they are, that the motor's mounted to, I welded them in place. Yeah, you remember. Um, I added them. Ooh, I guess I didn't have the camera rolling or I lost the video. Anyway. Yeah, I messed up. Go ahead, Eric. Okay, so, uh, I don't know what happened, really. I think I measured outside to outside instead of outside to center or outside to inside. Or, I don't really know. I just know that it didn't line up. So I cut it out and welded it back into place properly. Yeah, I think I measured off the wrong edge. Anyway, that was a while ago. And really, all the error counter cares about is that I messed up. That's really all it cares about. It's really, um, it's really mean, actually. Okay, so now that, uh, I got that whole, uh, plat the, uh, motor mounting thing to Bob fixed, it's, I can finish it. Because, um, I never said this, actually, but, uh, this is holding three motors. Two five horse, one ten horse. So, uh, I just did what I did before, except stood it up, dropped the platform on top, and loaded it. And then my, uh, GoPro died. I think I ran out of battery. He didn't die. Well, it wasn't an eternal death. It's not like I ran over it or something. Anyway, I'm gonna stop there. Okay, so now it's time to mount the motors. And this is when I really liked having a hoist. Unfortunately, the hoist did not go in between. So I ended up having to just 
carry it anyway. Uh, what I did was I stuck the motor on, marked out the holes, and then just drilled them. Why do I only have the one video of this? I, know, I lost some videos. I don't know where they went. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Wait, error counter. What are you doing there? Oh, yeah. When I welded that top platform on, I may have welded it in the wrong direction. So, that's why the motors are shifted. Uh, you won't, I don't think I installed a lower motor, so you might not be able to see it now. Oh, no, I do. Yeah, you see? They're kind of shifted. It's because I welded the top in wrong, then backwards. So, instead of turning the motor around and installing the motor in backwards, I just uh, made it go all in the same direction and just pushed it. And it just pushed itself up against that one edge. Anyway, uh... Okay, so that's it for this video. The next video, will, we will be making some guards to so that we don't get our fingers trapped into those holdings. And, uh, what else? Well, if I could read my notes, I tell ya! And I think I'm making an electrical box then. So, there'll be a lot of sheet metal work. Anyway, if you like this, hit the like button. If you want to make sure that you get episode uh, 3 and 4, what it's looking like it turned out to be. I'm looking at my if case you're wondering I got a monitor over there I'm looking at. You probably guessed that. I'm not that insane. Like, subscribe, throw down a comment if you want to say how crazy I am by talking to numbers. At least I don't talk to inanimate objects, right? Because we all know numbers are alive. I have no idea what that means. It's eleven o'clock at night. I'm wrapping this video up before I go, sound even more insane, and have people with uh, butterfly nets come and try to trap me. Anyway, before I go, um, let's see, uh, see that? Just go do it. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks.